Okay, so what can acupuncture do? Well, there is very little that it cannot accomplish. I mean, a master can insert a needle into the inner canthus of the eye, twist it so that it makes a 45-degree arc, and then stimulate the opt optic nerve and treat, with very varying degrees of success, optic blindness. We will not be attempting that. <laughs> We're going to go for the low-hanging fruit at first, which also happens to be the most abundant, musculoskeletal pain. Everybody has it to some degree, and everybody wants it gone. Herein, we can insert some productivity cost statistics, um, you know, that should be pretty self-explanatory. People in pain don't work as well as people who are free and happy and, and easygoing. Um, and, you know, we can get into the cost and productivity statistics a little later. Uh, for now, let's look at what acupuncture can treat and why it's effective and why it is superior to taking one aspect of traditional Chinese medicine, such as neuromuscular therapy or myofascial release or whatever name you want to put upon it, which is actually very ancient techniques of shiatsu and qigong and tui nat. <clears throat> when you have an acupuncturist, you have someone trained in all of these modalities and more. Personally, I'm a certified massage therapist. I got my certification back in 1990 at the Florida School of Massage, and I'm an acupuncturist. It took me four months to become a massage therapist, and when I was finished, I realized that I didn't know what I came to learn. I've been into martial arts for, well, at this point, 30-some years, and the internal arts, and let's not even get into this now, but when I was practicing Chung Mu Kwan back in the early 80s, there were a number of occasions where I was injured or I saw others that were injured, sometimes pretty badly. I mean, you know, we're not talking loss of limbs, but I've seen separated shoulders. Personally, I twisted my ankle so badly once, I, I thought it was broken. Um, instructors touch points. Uh, the, and, and not just right on the ankle where it hurt, but on the bottom of the foot, up by the knee, you know, what I now know to be stomach 36, spleen 9, et cetera, et cetera. Up in, this, up in the head. They were touching points in the head. And within minutes, I was up and practicing full strength. I mean, to me, that was a miracle. And frankly, I mean, to you, it would be a miracle, too, if it happened. I went to massage school trying to learn that. And they didn't teach me that. So when I graduated, I started studying acupuncture right away. So... Moreover, I <clears throat> was putting myself through acupuncture school as a massage therapist, and I was doing neuromuscular therapy and myofascial, and I was helping people a lot. But it'd be incorrect, absurd, in fact, to think that, you know, I'm not 100 times better after an additional three years of study, not to mention many years of practice. I, with acupuncture, I can treat 30 or more people a day, and I can do with a few cups or magnets or mocks or needles or through hands-on techniques much more in a more cost-effective and more efficient manner. Deep tissue massage is a wonderful adjunct, but it's not the total solution, nor is the average practitioner of deep tissue massage a skilled physician. There's somebody that's a massage therapist after four months of training, and, you know, the difference, well, it would take a little too long at this point to go into the difference, but the difference is there, believe me. I'm going to provide a link to the World Health Organization report on conditions that acupuncture has been clinically shown through testing to be effective in treating. Um, herein, I'm going to read these off to you kind of quickly, okay? Um, let's just start here. Disease symptoms or conditions for which acupuncture has been proved through controlled trials to be effect on effective treatment. Here we go. Adverse reactions to radiotherapy and or chemotherapy. That is, we can be an adjunct to, you know, people having chemotherapy, some of the side effects. Um, allergic rhinitis. So if you've got people that have um, uh, hay fever or, or allergies, we can be of help there. Biliary colic, depression, dysentery, dysmenorrhea, so, um, you know, menstrual problems, um, female problems, if you will, uh, epigastro, you know, acid reflux disease, all sorts of things, in this, you know, all sorts of stomach things, nausea. I mean, I can take a care of average nausea right there on the spot. Uh, it was the kind of stuff that it sent people home. Uh, facial pain, pain, you know, whether that be um, trigeminal neuralgia or, or um, uh, let me just keep reading, headache, hypertension, hypotension, induction of labor, knee pain, leukopenia, low back pain, male position of fetus. We can actually turn around a breech baby with acupuncture. Morning sickness, nausea, vomiting, neck pain, pain in dentistry periarthritis of the shoulder, post-operative pain, renal colic, rheumatoid arthritis, sciatica, sprain, stroke, were very, very, acupuncture is probably the best um, single therapy to, after someone's had a stroke, to get them back up and, and moving and, 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 and regaining all their faculties. Tennis elbow, 
Um, diseases and symptoms, diseases, symptoms, or conditions for which the therapeutic effect of acupuncture has been shown, but for which further proof is needed. Now, let me explain to you. If you walk in and you've got this and I treat it, you don't care about statistics. <laughs> if, if I make you better, it, it's proof enough to you. And I'm telling you some of these things uh, we can help, whether they got graphs of it or not, okay? Abdominal pain, acne, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't have any experience treating acne. Alcohol dependence, detox, we're great with addictions. Bell's palsy, bronchial asthma, ca asthma cancer pain, cardiac neurosis, colitis, um, competition stress syndrome. Um, you know, I, I take that. I take it that would be just being totally stressed out all the time. I'm not sure. Craniocerebral injury, earache, epidemic, eye pain, female infertility. I've written papers on infertility. I've had a lot of success with infertility. Oh, the list goes on. Facial spasm. Urethral syndrome, fibromyalgia. My Lord, do you know how many people have fibromyalgia? We can help that a lot. You know, the list is longer, and I, I can include that. I'm not going to go through all this, but it is schizophrenia, sp spine pain, stiff neck, you know, ulcerative colitis, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, quite a, it's quite an impre impressive list. But here's the thing. <laughs> I propose we start small. Uh, you know, I'm not out to heal the world right now. I, I'm, I'm saying... Let's go for the low-hanging fruit, the stuff that's in great abundance, and the, stu and, and, and the kind of conditions that respond quickly. In, in, you can see it. You don't need tests. You don't need to you know, take blood tests and test the hormone levels to see what effect we're having. You know, if you walk in and you can't lift your shoulder above your head, and three treatments later you're throwing a baseball, and <laughs> I think that's all the proof you need. So I say we go from musculoskeletal pain, from headache, to backache, menstrual cramps, irregular menst menstruation, carpal tunnel, post-surgical pain, migraines, knee pain, you name it. Um, there are many success stories, mine among them, as well as folks I've treated who did not require knee surgery because of my intervention. And I can tell you other stories of people who had knee surgery and then came to me, they needed me because they botched the knee surgery. I mean, I was, you know, it's a little too late to say, boy, I wish you would come to me first. But I've got strong Irish Chicago cops who couldn't walk, that were in tears, okay, that are now, you know, walking around and mobile again after a botched knee surgery where his knee swelled up like a pumpkin. You know, it's a little late at this point to say, well, you should have come to me first and you might not have needed knee surgery, but at least I can go a long way towards helping him, you know, get back on his feet after what we, I guess, could call the side effects of conventional medicine, you know, I, to me, it's not a side effect, that's an effect, but okay, whatever you want to call it. Um, what I'm saying, bring me those folks as well, anything from simple headaches to train wrecks, okay? Give us on average three times per week for 10 weeks. I mean, clearly it's not going to take 30 treatments to relieve a headache, you know, and someone who's had four spinal laminectomies and walks on braces is probably never going to play professional basketball again. You know, but they will see positive results, very positive results, you know, every, and everybody's different and, you know, we'll get into that. I mean, every case is different. Every person is an individual. Um, you know, the same person with the same ailment, if they've got a more positive attitude, they're stronger, they're, they're not overweight, you know, they're going to, their, their prognosis is going to be better. You know, one guy's 70, one guy's 30. The guy that's 30 has got more chi and jing in him. He's probably going to heal better and faster, you know, all other... Uh, factors being the same. Um, and all that needs to be accounted for and understood. But this for now, what we have here, this constitutes a good beginning. I mean, there's a lot, a lot more to cover. I mean, I'd like to tell you in some detail the mechanisms by which acupuncture works, both from a modern mechanistic perspective and from our ancient, tradi ancient traditional Chinese medicine. Um, I'd like to go into greater detail about how we propose to set up and conduct our trials and where we envision that leading us in the best case scenario. Uh, I would like to discuss the shortcomings of American medicine as I see them and how traditional Chinese medicine is in a perfect position to not only help but to provide cost-cutting solutions and what presentation would be complete without a detailed study of the costs and benefits. Here we can il illustrate the ability of traditional Chinese medicine to reduce health care costs at the personal and corporate level while adding years to our life and life to our years. And that translates into productivity, and that translates into cost savings, and that translates into greater profits. Herein, we will come to see the amazing potential that right now is being lost in great part due to the fact that the insurance industry does not have a proper understanding or respect for the value of traditional Chinese medicine. 
This translates into a lot of misinformation in public perception where a Chinese master is somehow confused with some new age hocus pocus. And you add to that the fact that while knee surgery may cost $30,000 plus the cost of convalescence and medication, it doesn't come out of your pocket. So you don't see, you know, if you've got insurance, you don't see it. But it does come out of the corporate budget. And to a patient who sees a price tag, you know, my price tag of 3000 to 6000 and the option of a $30,000 surgery, his or her response is likely to be, yeah, the company pays for it. The company, however, and that's you, <laughs> should be saying, well, let me hear a little bit more about your approach. And that's exactly what the next presentation will cover.